almost at the end, if you just will bear with me. Um, the, um, the title of the, of the conference, Enlightenment in the, in the Knowledge Society, um, we thought it would be a nice um, reflection and reference to the place, to the Genius Lutzi, where we are, because we are celebrating this year, and we have celebrated this year, the 275th anniversary of Göttingen University, and um, even in this building here, um, the, the collections we house, the, the 18th century was really the main um, 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 start of uh, the intellectual work here in Göttingen, the scholarly work, and it falls together with the area of enlightenment. So the Age of Enlightenment was a cultural movement of intellectuals uh, in the 18th century, uh, first in Europe and later on in, in other areas um, of the work. And its purpose was to reform society uh, using reason, but also to advance knowledge through science by promoting science and intellectual interchange. So this is the topic of open access. Um, Göttingen University, um, during the second half of the 18th century, developed into a central nodal point in the European network of science and humanities. Leading German and European scholars were appointed as professors at a relatively young university and studied, published, and taught in Göttingen, often establishing new branches of science and educating generations of scholars. Göttingen scholars developed, discussed, and presented the results of their research and also their scientific expeditions partly in their lectures, but also through correspondences they exchanged with their colleagues at other European universities. And some of us have been very lucky just before the conference started to have a look at some of the letters or the correspondence later on as well, for example, from Carl Friedrich Gauss, and they are housed here in special collections, um, so correspondence. These letters not only contained the ideas of their authors, but it was quite common for scholars in those days to send rock samples, plants, or technical instruments, but also books to their colleagues ahead. Göttingen University Library holds a vast number of scholarly correspondence in its manuscript collections, and these exchanges of scholars of the 18th and 19th century have now become important document for modern scholars. Now, from pilot to service, so moving from the Enlightenment and Knowledge Society to pilot of service, um, we are very pleased, so the consortium, the Open Air Consortium and Open Air Plus are very pleased that we can provide a really, a truly operational infrastructure that can be used, that is used, where we offer publications already for reuse, for searching and access, but also further on for researchers with a view to Horizon 2020 uh, to deposit all their publications there in providing access. Uh, it was a kind of surprise to, to, to know that when we started this endeavor, funders not really were aware of the kind of impact of their funding they have in terms of research publications. And so the question was, how many research publications do we have from our, through our funding programs? And it's not possible to answer the question. And of course, this is not to blame the European Commission, because if I ask at the, at the German Research Council, where I'm also working in a number of committees, they are not able to answer the question at all. That's very surprising, because research publications are one of the major results of research projects. So when we started the Open Air project, and it was a bit highlighted before, and it will later on be highlighted by our colleagues, Yanis Ioannidis and Eloy and other colleagues presenting um, open air. It's a really, really complex environment we are working with in linking to concrete services and databases like Cordis of the European Commission to work with all kinds of different disciplines who have different expectations 
um, how to publish, what to do. Uh, the publishing environment is, is very different. But one thing was very clear. There is no alternative. And we were very happy to, to hear this and to listen to this in the previous uh, welcome speeches. I have to say, and I guess it's, it's fair to do this in, in this framework, um, my, my university and library, we are doing a great deal of projects, but I have never seen such a um, comprehensive, successful consortium like an Open Air, Open Air Plus. Open Air and Open Air Plus really represents Europe in a sense, because we have at least one institution from all 27 EU member states plus a number of other states that have joined us in, in Open Air Plus as well. So the term of participatory infrastructure is really something that, and we were pleased to hear this, was supported very much by the European Commission, not only in terms of infrastructure, but also to reflect on the general character of the, of the European Union um, itself. Um, I would like to take the opportunity to, to thank the sponsors, which is are the Open Air, Open Air Plus projects, ultimately the European Commission providing funding uh, to the projects. Um, the uh, Lower Saxony Ministry for Science and Culture, who provided also generous funding for the conference, and also my library provided some funding to, um, to the conference. I would like to thank the organizers, and I will have opportunity later on, so tomorrow after the conference. It has been a lot of work for my colleagues and, and the team, not only here in Göttingen, but also together with colleagues in, at the University of Athens, uh, at Pisa, in, in, in all other places where, where they have um, prepared uh, the conference. Um, I'm, I'm really looking forward uh, to a successful conference here, and um, I, what I want to do before we really enter into the program is to give some gifts to our speakers here, to our welcome speakers, because of the Open Air Conference and the Open Air Project, we are not only a virtual environment, we also produce physical books. And so I would like to ask Ulrike Beisiegel and Johanna Wank and Thierry van der Peel just to come and so that we can hand over the gifts. Because it's difficult to read it from here, let me read it for you, the titles of the books. So the, uh, actually, there will be books, uh, Katarina, I guess, for each of the institutions represented here. So there will be books, so you can take one book with you um, if you are not flying and don't want to have too heavy luggage. That's, that's you. So there is one publication that was prepared by, by Birgit Schmidt and, and Irina Kushma from EIFL. That's called Implementing Open Access Mandates in Europe, Open Air Study on the Development of Open Access Repository Communities in Europe. It's number one. And then there is a second book edited by Christian meyer Zuberl and Wolfram Horstmann from Bielefeld University. Wolfram is now at Oxford as Associate Librarian. Studies on subject-specific requirements for open access infrastructure. And that's the second book. And I'm very pleased because this continues a tradition we had already in the driver project. Uh, so not only producing project reports and deliverables to the European Commission, but really sustainable books as well. Thank you very much. <laughs>